Welcome back. So as part of this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the model of the memory. You know, how can you go ahead and imagine memory? Well, first let's talk about, you know, much deeper question in life, which is what is memory? When would you call something memory? So it turns out anything that retains uh, its state uh, can be called memory. For example, an empty bucket, if it stays empty, it has remembered that, it has remembered the emptiness. Okay, hold, hold on, it gets better. Let's say I filled it with water. Then it's, the, the, the fullness is a state that it will remember. Right? Unless, of course, if you have a leaky bucket, uh, then it's not a good memory device. You know, it's, it's not going to remember its state. Right. If we had, let's say, a pen, so a pen with the cap on and pen with the cap off, you know, also uh, can hold one bit of information. It can hold one, it, it can be called one bit memory, right? So the idea of memory is that the state is remembered, the state is retained. And so in the, in the electronics world, uh, what we have done is we have, we have used, uh, well, I should not be drawing this transistor. Few people won't like that. Okay, so I'll draw this transistor, which is called the MOSFET. And again, you know, don't be scared. It doesn't get more technical than this in terms of, well, actually it gets a little more technical in a bit. But uh, we are not going to dive into you know, all of electronics. It's just the basics that you need to remember, and I'm going to run you through those. Okay, so this is called a MOSFET. So what people have done is, uh, people have taken two MOSFETs and, you know, I slowly you'll understand how much electronics I know. So, um, I don't recall which one is which, but I think, let's see, this is, you don't have to bother about it. And I might totally get this wrong, so who knows. Let's see. All right. So, they took... MOSFETs of opposite kind, as you can see, one is PNP, one is NPN, and please, 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 please forgive me in case I got the nomenclature upside down. Fair. The idea is this, that a transistor conducts once its gate terminal is activated. Let me put it that way. So what does that mean? It means this, if you have a transistor like so, and you have an LED connected here, again, uh, you know, very crude way of, and then there has to be a resistor here for technical reasons. Okay, and you have, let's say, a 5 volt battery here, you have the ground here. So if you connected this roughly to 5 volts, let's say, what happens is current flows from here to here, and the LED will light up. That's the idea. Okay, so that's number one. The other thing is, the other transistor is opposite. So in case, instead of hooking it to the higher voltage, if you hook it to the lower voltage, and you know the arrows need to reverse here for those reasons, if you hook it to the lower voltage level, what will happen is it will start to conduct. So both of them conduct the NPN and PNP based on the state of their gate terminal, so to speak. And what happens is, they're going to conduct. So this combination here is called CMOS and you can look it up and this is like the workhorse of digital electronics or dig digital circuits at the heart of all digital circuits that get you know fabricated uh, in a fab like TSMC or Samsung is the CMOS. Okay. All right, why are we discussing all of this? Oh, because I want you to be able to imagine what a memory is like. And it gets very, very simple. So bear with me. If you haven't understood, you know, go back, see again. Okay, so the idea now is once we connect them in this fashion, if we, if there was, let's say, you know, a high voltage here, then this, this line here gets connected to five volts. So we call this a logic high. And if this went low, and remember when this is high, 
this won't conduct that's why the conduction goes from here to here fair you don't have to remember any of this i'm just telling you this as an fyi because life becomes simpler for me all right so when this was h this transistor conducts and five volts appear here when and this one is off off meaning it's not conducting so when this is low this one is conducting and this one is not which means it takes the line and connects it to ground so this is how zeros and ones are being kind of uh, what do you say zeros and ones are being communicated or um, communicated using transistors right again we haven't talked about memory now the interesting thing is using such bistable bistable what does bistable mean bistable is two states and they can be uh, stable as long as the input is stable the output is stable okay so now what happens is you can arrange these transistors in a clever way to create gates logical gates and gate or gate uh, you know the not gate the universal gate so the idea then is we started off from a transistor right and then went to the idea of gates and this is where the interesting stuff starts to happen so we then from the gates we can create a feedback loop and let me just make that feedback loop very very simple for example because i don't want to complicate my life and yours uh, unless i have already done that so imagine what happens here so we are taking the not gate and the property of a not gate is given a high voltage which we call one and low voltage is zero so given the states one it will convert it to zero and given a state zero it will convert it to one now look what happens if for somehow i have put one here zero will appear here and that zero appears here and so a one appears here and now if i have disconnected my input what you can imagine is if i put another inverter here it's also called inverter by the way the not get so what will happen is when i read from here i can read one right so essentially we can say because of the loop here loop of the two not gates what ended up happening was the information about the bit being one is trapped and what does trapped mean trapped essentially mean hey it's remembering it's remembering what one bit right so again the technicalities of how do you load a one how do you load a zero different story more nuance and more details but what i want you to remember just for fun right now at least at this point is we started with the transistor reasoned about cmos we went to the digital gates from the digital gates we picked out the not gate and just using that we were able to create something that holds one bit right and so now what happens is using such combination such uh, transistor combinations you can you have essentially created the unit of memory the physical unit of memory which is one bit and now you can have many bits in parallel and that is called a register right? and register is something that we have seen earlier we talked about register in the cpu so you can now imagine just 32 of these right and that would be called the 32 bit wide register okay it gets more interesting so the next thing is you can now also put registers you can stack registers up and guess what this is the general purpose register bank of course when we are stacking bits together when we are uh, stacking registers together there will be some extra digital circuit that goes here in terms of you know routing or controlling each bit and then we call this as for for example this would be called the 31st bit and this would be called the zero bit what's on the you know what's on the right of the screen right now towards zero is called the lsb lower significant bit 
and the 31st location is called the MSP, the uh, most significant bit. Now again, what I want to emphasize is this exact piece of imagination will help us when we are trying to deal with the bit operations. When we are trying to reason about, okay, which bit to move, where to move, all of that, the bit manipulation tasks become super, super simple if you can imagine a register. Right. Perfect. And so now when we come to the GPRs, well, there is also some digital circuit in front controlling the registers. And each of these registers, you can say, have a location. So what does that mean? It means I can address a register through a number, right? And this circuit here will help me essentially activate that. Right? So this was about the GPR. Now we go further. And what we then say is, hey, how about we have too many of such registers. Huge number of them. Well, that is the memory. And hopefully I have connected the dots from you right from the transistor up to the memory. And again, there would be some circuit here that helps us based on the address, you know, target a cell, select that, either put it onto the data bus for reading or whatever was the data coming from the data bus will be written to this cell, depending on the address. Oh, just a moment. Yeah, depending on the address. Okay, so what I want you to now finally remember, like in terms of one last bit of information, is that usually when we talk about instructions, instructions span 32 bits in general, not a mandate, but for the kind of machines we are going to see, actual machine that we are going to work with, uh, it would be 32 bits, right? So usually you'll see program counter would jump from the zeroth location to fourth location to eighth location to 12th and so on and so forth. And that's the reason, right? Now this model of memory, and I just want to go over it again. We talked about, we started with transistor, reasoned about the MOSFET. I talked about when it conducts, when it doesn't, and then how from that people have made gates and using a NOT gate in loop, we can essentially trap a bit. And that is the notion of memory, one bit. We came from there, reasoned about the registers. Then we said, hey, we can stack up registers and create a register file, a register bank or a file. Same thing, uh, two different names. Then we also reasoned about, hey, too many registers in a row can lead us to a memory, right? To a memory. Now, again, remember these are models. This is, well, a part of it is true. That's what is kind of implemented in reality. But I just want to kind of leave you with one practical bit of information. The DRAM that all our systems have, the 12 GB RAM that or 6 GB RAM, they are implemented using capacitors okay again this is fyi if you forget it perfectly fine uh, no problem at all but uh, the capacitors essentially can hold charge if you dump charge on them and the fact that they hold charge is like the bucket which is filled except this is a leaky bucket so over time the charge reduces and the information is lost so what the dram technology does is it comes and refreshes there are circuits in in it which come and refresh the charge so it's like your bucket is leaky but every now and then after a very finite interval of time you come and make sure that the bucket is filled so that way what happens is you're able to remember zero or one an empty capacitor is zero a filled capacitor is one and that's the basis of the dram technology right what i told you about the two inverters in in kind of in a loop uh, you know trapping the information one let's say this is an implementation of sram static ram right so static ram is implemented using straight up transistors the dram is used uh, rather implemented using capacitors right the workhorse here 
is the MOSFET or the CMOS transistor and um, the NOT gates and here the workhorse is the capacitor. Right? This is just FYI. What I want you to remember is this uh, and this. Right? So if you have uh, you know, convinced yourself or I have given you enough reason to be convinced, then the model of the CPU and the model of the memory, just hold that tight in your brain, you know, brain tattoo it. What you'll see is as we start to talk about the C language, various keywords, various features and all of that, all of this will just make life so much simpler. You, It will be very hard for you to make an error uh, in terms of reasoning if you have this model in your head. All right, so with this, I'll see you in the next one.